hi uh, today uh, we will see the types of mold from manufacturing technology types of mold from manufacturing technology the molds are following two types that is are temporary molds and permanent molds temporary mold these molds are destroyed at the time of removing the casting from them and the sand molds permanent molds these molds are used in die castings these molds are used time and again example for the metallic molds molding process the molding process may be classified as follows bench molding the molding is done for the bench convenient height uh, to the molder is called the bench molding it is used for small work floor molding the molding is done foundry floor is called floor molding it is used for all medium sized and large castings <coughs> pit molding very large molds are made in a pit cavity cut in the floor accommodate very large casting is called the pit molding the pit act as a drag since the pit mold can resist the pressures developed by all gases therefore mm, greatly save the potential expenses machine molding the machine molding is done by the machine is called machine molding small medium and large molds may be made with help of the variety of the machines machine molding is usually faster and more uniform than the bench molding machine molding generally requires the mounted patterns <coughs> these type types of sand molding the green sand molds and dry sand molds and skin dried molds and loam molds and metal molds green sand molds among the sand molding casting process the molding is often done with the green sand the green sand molding is a sand may be defined as the plastic mixture of sand grains clay water and the warm, uh, other materials which can be used for molding and casting process the sand is called a green because of moisture present and thus the distinguished from the dry sand the basic steps of the green sand molding are preparation of the pattern most of the green sand is done by with the match plate and coop and drag pattern loose pattern are used when relatively few castings of the types are <coughs> loose patterns are used which when relatively few castings of types are to be made in simple hand molding the loose piece patterns are placed on the mold board and surrounded with the suitable sized flask as uh, il, il, um, the ma- marking making the mold the molding requires the ramming and uh, sa- sa- sand around the pattern as the sand is packed it develops the strings and becomes rigid within the flask and ramming may be done by the hand as in simple uh, the for the sprue the gating systems is uh, mold activity or simply channels for the entry of the motion of metal can be molded core settings with coop and drag ops of the molds and made the patterns withdrawn the cores are set into the mold cavity from the internal surfaces of castings the closing and weighing the coop and drag closed the coop must be easily be weighed on down clamped the drag prevent it from the floating when the metal is poured advantages great flexibility of uh, production process the least costly method for molding the less time consuming the since the may baking of operations or equipments is required green sand and uh, molds can be used for all types of ferrous and non ferrous alloys disadvantages 
certain metals and some um, castings develop the defects of a pool and into the molds and uh, containing the moisture more intricate on the castings cannot be made the dimensional accuracy of finish of um, of the green sand castings may not be adequate green mold cannot be strong and may be damaged during the handling by the metal corrosion storage and of green molds or longer period of it not possible dry sand molds the sand molds are made with the sand that does not require the moisture to develop the strength these molds are used for the steel castings advantages the dry sand molds are stronger and may be handled more easily with less damage dry sand eliminates the possibilities of mixtures related to the defects in the castings surface finish of casting is better mainly because the dry sand molds are coated with a wash disadvantages these are more expensive and comparatively castings are are more prone of odd learning distortion is greater than the green sand molds and because of the backing the production is slower than the green sand mold more flash equipment is needed to produce the same number of finished pieces because the processing cycles are larger than the green sand molds skill dried molds the sand molds with dry sand is piecing and green sand packing are called the skill dried mold they can be employed for casting all ferrous and non ferrous alloys they are more commonly used for the large molds as compared to the dry sand molds are less expensive to construct but more expensive than the sand molds they are stronger than the dry sand molds low molds these molds are some with loam sand and the loam sand also contains fire clay and green stones they are used for launch bug a loam mold is constructed of porous and bricks cemented together with loam mortar the inside the brick structures forms the rough contour of castings and it is pieced with 6 to 12 mm layer of loam sand to give the record shapes Loam molds requires enough area and space. It is difficult to give the proper contour and shape is suitable only for the single castings. Metal molds are permanent type of the molds. They are used for the die casting where the molten metal is introduced into the metallic mold and cavity by means of pressure. Sometimes even gravitational force is sufficient to fit the the metal into the mold cavity these molds are in the casting of low melting temperature alloys advantages improve the surface finish since the castings produced by the metal molds have smooth surface finish therefore much of the machine work is eliminated high production rate the section can be cast the casting produce are less defective disadvantages i cost of the molds and equipments for maintenance molds and equipments and special skill is required following parts of the work of noting noting in a foundry are uh, up to 90% of the mold sand can be reprocessed to make the new molds majority of castings are poured in green sand molds more than 85% of all castings are poured and sand molds balance or meet the ceramic cells or metal molds core core is a body of the refractory materials which is set into the prepared mold for before closing and pouring it for forming the holes and recess projections and rickets in the internal cavities the core are subjected to much more severe thermal 
and mechanical effects than the moles because they are surrounded all on all sides of the molten metal consequently coarse sand should be meet more stringent requirements refractoriness of the thermal stability core can be increased by giving a thin coating of graphite of a similar material to the surface of the core the characteristics of core the core should have the following characteristics core must have dry strength and be capable of being handled after drying it must be able to withstand the force of the molten metal it should be produce the minimum amount of the gas when in contact with the molten metal it should be highly refractory and able to withstand the high temperature of molten metal it should be more permeable than the mold itself and for this reason the coarse sand and with large grain size mixed with molasses is used for core making it should be uh, capable of collapsing softly molten metal as solidified around the core collapsibility provides the preferences of the contraction of metal the surface of the core should be smooth as so as provide the good finish of the castings core backing core are made of the simple wooden and metallic plastic core boxes these core boxes are part of the pattern equipment for castings complicated shapes may be required to support the sand or metal formers until these are backed simple method of core backing is similar to that of the mold making the sand mixer is rammed into the core box with wooden rammer sometimes the course may be need reinforcement with wire or nails or in order to provide the internal support so that they may not be collapse while handling the core and the mixers rammed by the hand and pneumatic rammers winding and other necessary operations are performed during the construction of core for the production work machines are used for the core making where the core and sand mixture rammed jolting skewing and bowling blowing means the suitable machines the most of the most of the common core making machines is the core blower winding reinforcing the other necessary operations are performed by and during the core constructions sometimes some uh, may be need by extruding the core sand mixture through the suitable die opening is called stock course symmetrical cross section course are removed from the core box placed in the metal trays and backed in a, an an oven at suitable temperatures varying from 150 to 400 degree centigrade for the record duration time source of heat may be burning of gas oil coke and electric heating the types of cores according to the state of the core the green and the cores or the dry sand cores oil sand cores loam cores and metal cores green sand cores these are made of ordinary molding sand mixed with fluid and sand through the vented and not to damp they are restricted to simple sheet reinforced with substantial core iron for handling or not dried before using dry sand core the cores consist of molding and and the sand with controlled conditions such opening materials as moss manure and sawdust and chopped straw and blend together the mill of the with the water and the clay water and any other suitable building against against the ample core ions or used for strengthening the interiors of large cores are filled with coke facility venting and overcome contractions of strings 
the are banked until perfectly dry oil sand pours they consists of chiefly of sea shore or other silica sands to which has been uh, added the binding medium a few typical binders being lines on oil resin mostly and coral flour all pours of this type of banked before handling loom pour loom pours or perforated the casting on steel the barrel on to which has been to bound the straw or hay band and then coated the loom the whole is then banked perfectly dry metal cores metal cores are used made up of steel and mostly used in making on non ferrous castings acting as a densers also import a finely fine finish they are also production the iron castings to produce with the white hard skin according to the core of in the mold the horizontal core vertical core balanced core cover core hanging core and wing core horizontal core the core is usually cylindrical in the form of horizontally pointing line of the mold the ends of the core is rest on the seat is provided the prince of the pattern vertical core the core is placed vertically in the mold usually the top and bottom of the core are provided with a taper about the amount of the taper on the top is greater than that of the bottom balanced core the core is similar to the horizontal core but it supported and only one one end or the one uh, supported at uh, one end only the the core print is such cases should be large enough the proper bearing of the core cover core and hanging core the cover core is used when the entire person is rammed in the drag and the core is recorded for to be supported the mold this type of the core is usually recorded whole through the upper part of the perm permit metal to reach the mold if the core is hangs from the foot <coughs> and does not have the any support at the bottom in the trunk then it is called the hanging core wing core a wing core is used when the hole or lesses is applied in the casting either above or below the pointing line in this case the side of the core print is given the sufficient amount of paper so that the core can be placed readily in the mold the core is sometimes designated by the other um, names such as tail core drop core char core saddle core according to its shapes and position in the mold core sand the core sand is variety of silica sand and rock sand and river sand and shore sand and commonly known as the soft sand and generally used for making the course and chiefly because of the are capable of withstanding the high temperature and resisting the penetrating actions of the most metal they have in addition i porosity together good permeability having no natural bond these sands are mixed with suitable binder and there are the several kinds of the form of creams oils and resins these binders are bound out by the time casting and fold making of poor fable is easy to remove core prints for supporting the core and mold cavity of the impression in the form of the recess is made in the mold with the help of the production person the projection is known as the core print core prints or horizontal core prints it provides the seats of the horizontal mold vertical core print it produces the seats to support the vertical cores in the mold balanced core print it produces a single seat uh, on the one side of the mold and the core remains partly in this formed seat partly in the mold cavities 
two portions of the balancing each other the hanging portion of the coat may be supported on the top legs cover coat print the forms the seat support the cover coat wing coat print it is used for the seat of the wing coat coat box coat box is a type of the production in the sand coat coat box also are used for the foundry work from the sheet in the sand is called the covers which are used in connections with molds when the holes of the internal sheets are recured the various methods of constructions are used for depending on the shape of the size of the coat and it is removable from the box after it is made the inside of the coat box must be cut out in the form of the exact shape of a low part of record in the casting set place the extension of uh, locating in the print sheet the coat boxes are filled with sand um, which is made from the ramming removed by the opening boxes on the central joint taking it away from the core and various directions by the number of joints if a plain hole is recured in casting the core is a cylindrical piece of the sand the length of the hole plus print portions this core can be made simple core box cut from the two pieces of the wood held together with doubles and doubles on the central joint another method of build up core boxes is to make the joint in such portions as will enable to straight cuts to be made the piston core box the each piece of the box is made the thickness of the sections at which the diameter of the pistons alters and screw together after making the out of the joint on the box the pieces are taken apart or cut through the glued and screwed back of the main portions stickles are frequently used on the core box to obtain the shapes of the large box they may be from from the guide and held against the parallel side of the core box molding sand in the foundry shop the sand is a principles of molding materials and is used in all types of casting the molding sand possesses the all the properties of which will foundry purpose and is used in time and again the properties of molding box molding sand permeability it is the property to allow the gases to escape easily from the mold higher slip contents land and lower in the gas permeability if the mold is rammed too hard permeability will be increased vice versa it is measured by the 60 80 100 120 etc the strength of the coach is measured it is defined as the property of holding together of sand grains a molding sand should have the ample strength so that the mold does not collapse or get partially destroyed during the conveying turning over or closing a strength of molding sand grows with density clay content mix with decreased size and such sand grains and this the strength of the mold sand increases the porosity is decreases refractiveness it is ability to mold sand mixture to withstand the heat melt and without showing the any sign of softening patience it increases the grain size and of sand it is constant of diminished amount of impurities and sludges plasticity of the flowability it should be plastic nature so that it can be easily take any desired shape collapsibility this is ability of molding of the sand mixtures decrease in the form volume of some external under the compressive process developed by the shrinkage metal during the freezing and subsequent cooling this property permits the molding sand collapse easily during the shakes of the permits that could collapse easily during the knockout of the cooled castings the lack of collapsibility in 
molding sand and could may be results in formations of the cracks in the casting this property depends upon the amount of the quartz and sand binders and their type adhesiveness this is the property of the sand mixture adhered to the another body the molding sand should be clean sides of the mold boxes so that it does not fall without when the flask or liquid and turn over this property depends upon the type of the amount of the binder used in the sand mix coefficient of expansion the sand should be low coefficient of expansion chemical resistivity the sand should not be chemically react the combined with molten metal the types of molding sand molding sands are classified according to the clay bonding material natural sand it contains the sufficient amount of binding clay that for no more binder is required to be added synthetic sand it is the one of the artic- artificially compound by sand, molding sand and selective type of the clay binders etc these sands have been the following advantages lower cost in the volume and wide spread availability possibility of the sand reclamations and rescue according to their use green sand the sand it is a natural of the moist tips is called the green sand it is a mixture of the silica with 20 to 30% clay the water is 10% green sand mills are used to size casting ferrous and non ferrous materials dry sand when the mixture from the green sand is evaporated to the dry baking after the mold is called the dry sand the dry sand molds have the greater strength and rigidity stability dry sand molds are used for the large heavy castings loam sand the loam sand is consists of the high as 50% of the clay concerns it is used for the loam molding of large grey iron castings facing sand uh, sand is used for facing the mold is called the facing sand since it comes in contact with the molten metal uh, with the poured and therefore it must be possess the high strength of refractiveness potting sand the potting sand is purely clay free silica sand and what is which is sprinkled uh, on the pattern of the potting surfaces of the mold sand and coop and drag separate without changing the do not stick the to the pattern backing and flow sand a sand used to back up the facing and sand and not used for the next to the pattern is called the backing sand because of its back color black color sometimes called black sand coarse sand a sand of preparation is called coarse sand it sometimes is called oil sand the silica sand up to 75% clay is 85% and bernstein is 2 to 5% coal dust is 5 to 10% and the water is 7 to 8% a large proportion of silica gives a refractory stand but in excess of this twice it could be seamless this would be termed as open weak of shop or sand the it and indicates that it is at as a good refractory or permeability but no cohesive bonding quantities the presence of aluminia and gives a sand with clay contents which acts a binder but if is if in excess destroys permeability of the sand is uh, this is conditions is known as the close or strong the aluminia with fine the high temperatures if a high percentage is in sand it will be lower it bonding efficiency for any subsequent molding metallic oxides and lime is the excess in par refractory of the qualities of sand and increases the feasibilities the condition is to be avoided 
the casting would have been very crowd surface indicating the poor stripping quality following points are worth on noting the sands may be blended together and open sand is added strong sand and makes the resultant of the mixtures more refractory or to increase the permeability or close sand may be mixed with the weak sand to give the cohesion the natural sands used alone are not suited for the all metals and alloys with their varying characteristics cool dust and casting in green sand molds cow are as or smasher is a bronze then the sulfur and boric acid magnesium castings benten for general work in green sand various oils and creams are for pour making for mixing the blending sands the various types of machines are used mainly the pan mill and centrifugal patterns the sand testing in order to make the record level accuracy the surface finish of casting the molding sand should be proper quality the proper quality of molding sand this is the sound casting that will be decrease the cost per unit of uh, increase the production the periodic test are necessary to determine the essential quantities of the foundry sand the properties of the mold sand is depends upon the shape and size the compositions and distributions of the sand grain these are standard test to be used which are given the relevant indian standards and do the other foundries societies test or conduct on a sample of the standard sand the mold molding sand should be prepared exactly be done of the standard equipment then carefully enclose uh, container sieve rod is moisture content bs is recommending the following test fitness test and uh, finest test permeability test strength test moisture content test clay content test mold hardness test the finest test the test determines the size of the grains of the distributions of grains different sizes of the molding sand the test is performed completely dry and clay free sand the procedures to carry this um, test the dried clay free sand grains are placed on the top sieve of the sieve shaker shaker which contains a series sieve is one upon one upon the uh, uh, other with gradually decreasing the mesh sizes the sieve is or shaken continuously for a period of 15 minutes after a shaking operation sieve is or taken apart and sand lift over which the sieve is or carefully weighed each weight is converted into the percentage basis each percentage is multiplied by the weighing factor and these are added to give the sum of the products grain finest number is expressed as the sum of the products divided by sum of the percentage of the sand retained of the sieve span examples which i the by both the definition of the finest number the average grain size is correspond to the sieve number through which all the sand grains will be passed through if the they are seen of the same size this is very convenient way of uh, <coughs> describing the grain size and its value or uh, can be expected between 40 to 200 feet for those sands used by the most of the foundries although the properties of the sand on both grain size and the grain size distributions gfn is a very convenient way of finding the sand properties since it makes a boot into the account permeability test the porosity of the molding sand measures the ability to permeate permeability number the procedures to carry out the test specimen this sum the permeability number relative number is necessarily permeability would need with the same sand and depends upon the competence of the sand the permeability test is 
attracted for the two types of sand green permeability and is permeability of green sand dry permeability is the permeability of the molding sand dried 105 to 110 degree centigrade to remove the moisture completely strength test strength test of the molding sands can be carried out of the universal sand strength testing machines the strength can be measured in compact from compression of the shear tension the sands that could be tested or green sand and dry sand and coarse sand the compression test and shear test involve the standard cylindrical specimens that was used for the permeability test green sand green uh, green compression strength it refers to the stress required to the ruptures and the sand specimen under the compressive loading the sand specimen is taken out the specimen tube and is immediately drying the sample put on the strength of the testing machines and the force is required to cause the compressor failure is determined in green shear strength with the stand similar to the above test the different adopter is fitted in the universal machines so that the loading now be made of the shearing sand sample the stress is required to shear the specimen along the axis it then represented the gear shear strength the green shear strength may be vary from 10 to 15 gram pascals and dry strength test is the specimen of dried 105 to 110 degrees centigrade for 2 hours since the strength is greatly decreases with drying it may be necessary to apply the larger stresses than the previous test the range of dry compression strength is found in molding 140 to 1800 kilo pascals depending upon the samples moisture content stress determined by loss of the weight after the evaporation procedure the test of the moisture molding sand is carefully weighed the test in the sample of the 50 grams is dried at the temperature of 105 to 110 degrees 2 hours and the moisture in the sand would have been evaporated the sample is then weighed the weight of the difference in grams divided by the weight samples the multiplied by the 100 gives the percentage of moisture contained in the molding sand alternatively the moisture teller can be also the measuring the moisture content in this arrangement the sand is dried suspending the sample on the fine metallic screen and allowing the hot air to flow through the samples this method of drying the complete removal of moisture in matter of minutes to hours as in the earlier method another moisture teller utilizes the calcium carbide measure the moisture contents and a measured amount of calcium carbide and a container along the separate cap consisting of measured quantity of molding sand is kept in the moisture teller the contact with each other the clay content test the clay content molding uh, sand is determined by dissolving of weighting of sand procedure the 50 gram of molding sand is tried to 105 to 110 degrees centigrade the dried sample can be 1 liter glass flask is added with 475 ml distilled water 25 ml 1% NaOH solution the sample is thoroughly stirred after stirring the period of 5 minutes the sample is diluted the fresh water up to the sand and settled at the bottom and clay particles are washed from the sand only floating in the water 1 to 1.25 mm the above operation is repeated till the uh, water is above the sand and seam uh, becomes the uh, clear which an indications that all the clay in the molding sand has been removed 
the sand is removed from the flask and dried by the heating difference in in weight of dried gives the clay content the mold uh, the mold oddness oddness test the mold oddness is measured by the method of similar to the brinell oddness test procedure the spring loaded steel ball 0.9 kg is intended into the standard sand specimen preferred with the depth of indentation is directly measured on the scale which shows the 0 to 100 when no penetrations occurs a um, mold oddness of 100 when it sinks the completely reading is 0 indicating the very soft molds the melting equipment the melting equipment the crucible furnace the rubber battery of the air furnace open air furnace electric furnace cupola furnace crucible furnace filtering furnace tilting type furnace and it is built to suit the type of the metal um, to be melted these are fixed wholly and partly in ground from the crucible must be lifted when the metal is ready <coughs> here the crucible is made of the fire clay and mixed with coal dust in the pit of the floor the furnace is usually fired with the sufficient coal is being um, packed around around the above the crucible parts and melts super heat change charge without cook recooking and the natural draught of the is provided by the tall chimney and controlled by means of the loss of bricks damper the tilting banaip of the crucible furnace this type of the furnace built at the ground level and contains firmly fixed crucible the furnace is fired with coke oil and gas whose daughter is used the the when the metal charge ready for pouring coal furnace crucible is emptied by operating the gear tronium the for the metals or metal mills and a clay form guns cruises low melting points and casting seal is crucible or suitable rubber battery of the air furnace this is used for melting on heat of the large quantity of the metal and trees of the casting alloys brasses and bronze this type of the furnace also used for the production of wrought iron chichichur not in the foundry but near the forge of rolling mills is known as the pudding furnace it may be how the either sopping roof or double arched roof forms the center of the chimney provided at the end of the burners and the end of the breath of the wheel it employs the natural draught which controlled by the dampers the fields can be small humble coal which is used for the fire grate covered by the fuel which is supplied through the burners and strikes back the furnace and melted in the hearth open air furnace the open air furnace is the production of the refining purpose gas heated and admitted through the pores of the lift burn above the earth and the hot spent of the gases heat the um, brick uh, work and chamfer before reaching the chimney shaft after about the 20 minutes the direction of air gas flow is reversed so that the cold air passes through the newly heated brick chambers while the the lift reheated in preparation of the next cycle the electric furnace this is used for the rigid control and temperature analysis is required for all types of the metal and metal alloys the direct arc and indirect arc arc type furnace the direct arc furnace it consists of the round bowl shaped carbon hearth and the down shaped dome shaped 
roof supporting on more carbon electrodes roof which passes through the current which strikes the ox with metal earth this giving the heat direct into the metal this type of the furnace can be either stationary or heat tilt the roof is usually so made it can be removed for charging purpose the capacity of the furnace for production work varies from the <coughs> 3 to 10 tons this best suited for the laboratory work where very small quantity of the few kg is needed research work then this furnace is high melting rate high cooling time temperatures and excellent control of the metal analysis temperature the indirect or furnace the furnace is used for melting all types of the metal alloys but especially useful in the production of the copper and base alloys it consists of the horizontal cylinder lined with refractory materials with two electrodes on the horizontal axis and or to struck between the electrode and in the center of the furnace of the fur the arc does not come in contact with the metal to be melted the heat is being given to the charge radiation from the arc and reflection from the small wall of the furnace the furnace is designed to give the rocking motions as the melting proceeds and quickening up the melt by the distributing the heat more rapidly change charging the tapping and slagging or den through an opening of the side of the furnace the induction furnace an induction furnace is a tilting furnace used briefly for melting the non ferrous metals heating is generated the resistance of wood and also an induced current to set up within the metal of the furnace the design of the furnace so that the small channels is inside it the base of the channel is filled with the metal when working of alternating current is supplied to the primary coil and transformer which builds the furnace introduces the current and liquid metals is the channel which acts the secondary transformer and the current of the circuit of the metal of the channel to heat up the circuit through the um, bath metal the copala furnace the furnace of different commonly used for melting and refining the pig iron with cast iron the steel scraps besides the iron castings cupola can be used for making the some copper juice alloys also fuel the cupola is generally good grade and low sub um, sulfur coke and the cool carbon um, the cupola can be employed for duplexing triplexing operations for making steel duplexing and triplexing melting operations employ two or three furnaces respectively construction and working construction cupola consists of the cylindrical steel shell with interior lined with heat resisting fire bricks it is a vertical shaft furnace and a blast furnace into the which the raw materials or the fuel in charge on the top air by combustion fuel is introduced through the more rows of the tiles short distance above the bottom since the cupola is is only concerned with the melting of metals and not working with reduction of cause as a blast furnace considerably smaller than the blast furnace or the same output working in a cupola furnace first operations is to light the fire at the bottom when the fire burning strongly the coke is added gradually till the level of above tiles about 0.6 meters this coke serves as a bed for the alternate changes of metal the flux in the coke will follow when the shaft of the cupola is filled level with charging the dude 
flask is put on the combustion of cook near the piles increases rapidly until the intense of heat is attained the gas of the combustion moves upward and forms on the portions of heat and metal and cook waiting and and they sense one 5 to 10 minutes in the fast charge of the metal from the melting trickles down through the cook and finally outlets of the bottom of cupola the adequate quantity as accumulated the plug clay called bowl removed from the top hole and the metal is allowed to the ladle the temperature trapping is 1200 degrees in 2400 degrees centigrade after melting the uh, number of uh, <coughs> charges as per the requirements the bid so cook removed through the drop bottom and door quenches quenched with the water so as available for the use of the next day the fluxes are added charged to remove the oxides of the other impurities present in the metal the flux is the most commonly used in the lime the proportions about 2 to 4 percent of metal charge and some of the other fluxes that may be used to uh, dormate of the sodium carbonate and calcium carbide the flux is expected to react with oxides and form the compounds with have low melting point and or also lighter as results of molten slag tends to float the metal pool and this can be very easily uh, separated hot <coughs> hot blast kupala the hand batch kupala offers from the ordinary kupala in the respect of the utilizes preheated blast of air combustion purposes the air supply preheated to the 200 to 400 degrees centigrade with the help of gases from coming out the stock of the separate heat and put the use of the preheater air blast offers the advantages higher temperatures can be obtained melting rate is faster improve the combustion cooks are served by 20 to 25 percent cupola operations are improved saving in the flux the reduce the oxidation losses the form the construction of metal iron is more uniform sulfur pickup is less then the higher proportions of steel scrap and add the cupola charge even the low grade and cook may be used limitations the maintenance problems are increased the additional cost of the equipment is required for pre eating and the air blast us the only the additional equipment and extra care needed for operations and the blast of the cupolas are used for the used in the shops and the record the large amount of continuous basis the advantages of limitations of cupola the simplicity of the operations low initial cost compare the um, compare the other furnace of the same city capacity and continuity of the productions economy of working high degree of efficiency increase the output and less floor space requirements as compared as compared to those others furnaces of the same capacity limitations it is difficult to maintain the close temperature control since the motion molten iron cook and come into contact with each other the certain elements of uh, sink magnesium last a while others are picked up consequently the final analysis of the molten iron changes efficiency of cupola the percentage of cupola the heat utilized preheating melting and super heating <coughs> pre heating zone starts from the above the melting zones extends up to the bottom charging doors melting zones the starting of starting from the first layer to the metal charge 
of the coca head on the extremes up to the height of the 90 cm is less the super eating zone super eating zone is suited for 15 cm to 13 cm the efficiency of the kupala varies from 30 percent when the kupala is examined after the dumping of the remains through the bottom door the guru one guru or can be uh, seen the kupala tire linings this guru shows the locations of the high temperature zone the cook bed charge and reach the height of the guru and above the stand of the bottom kupala charge calculations the combustions of the metal may be applied as so as the control properly in the final analysis out of the various elements for when silicon manganese sulfur element ones is or carbon the chain charge of the comes in the cook bed and the on the temperature and the time the metal is contact with cook the reasonable pick up for the 0.15% of carbon silicon silicon is likely to the cupola therefore loss of 10% total silicon is contained in charge of the is normal under the worst conditions if the silicon content is in the charge i extra silicon can be added into the locating the metal of landil ferrulesms magnesium the element is also likely to be melting the process loss could be in the order to the 15 to 20 percent sulfur the element should also likely pick up during the pick up depends upon the sulfur contents and the emit could be 0.05 percent uh, the fix the um, orchidability composition of various constants cupola charges knowing the percentage of elements like carbon silicon manganese phosphorus and sulfur the present in each constituents of the charge estimate the final analysis of iron the determine the whether it has come out of the same desire iron or not negative adjuster of the percentage of the each constituent of the charge recirculate of the final analysis from melting and pouring melting down uh, in order to good defect of the free castings proper melting of the metal is essential factors of controlling the proper melting in glues uh, gases in melting selection of control gas scrap plus approximate furnace with temperatures to and atmosphere control melting techniques should not be only provide the molten metal at required temperatures but should also provide the materials for the good quality and required quantity the gases produced during the casting may be lead to poor quality of casting in metal casting the gases may be mechanically trapped may be developed due to the variations in the solubility at different temperatures and phases and may be produced due to the chemical reactions therefore the vacuum melting of the metal is increasingly used to preventing the solution of the gases and the molt metal or combination of the reactive elements is the melt the vacuum melting has been found for the more effective controlling dissolving the gases in the chemical compositions molten metal often reacts the with the oxygen of the metal axis to get into the mold during the pouring and the interfere of the castings this can be controlled by covering the molten metal with flaxes or by carrying the carrying out the melting and pouring and in the vacuum alternatively the lattice which pour um, on the molten metal beneath the surface can be used the furnace uses used for the molten metal differ widely in the operations designed from the another furnace mainly the selected on the basis of the metal chemistry for the maximum temperatures 
cupola is extensively used for melting the cast iron primarily because of the lower initial cost of the melting and the number of the other furnaces such as induction furnace side blow converters are available for melting foundry alloys and choice of essential depends upon the type of the alloy being melted the maximum temperature is required and rate of mode of delivery thank you we will see in next video